there is no cookie cutter way to become a software engineer. And since there are many YouTube videos already providing a technical blueprint for you to follow, my goal today is to give you the underlying tools and skills that I don't often hear people talking about, as well as a bird's eye view of the whole path ahead to make sure you succeed. Don't worry though, I also did make an accompanying guide that you can get for free in the description below with a more specific and technical path for you to follow. My name is Juan Carlos and I'm a software engineer in big tech trying to make sense of all of this and today I'm hoping to make it a bit less overwhelming for those of you aiming to build a similar career. The first thing is, I didn't really become a software engineer because I wanted to become one, or because I wanted one of those high paying jobs. Don't get me wrong, when I found out about them, I definitely aimed for one. But the first step for me was finding something cool that I could do with technology. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know that for me, that was the iPhone app store. I just couldn't believe how cool it would be to build software that you can physically touch and have it live in your pocket. I call this thing the itch, one that you can only scratch by learning how to code and building something that satisfies that itch or craving. You wouldn't go on a long road trip without fuel in your car or on a hike without some food and water. I very often see people skipping this step and jumping straight into coding tutorials and they just drop the ball in a moment of frustration because trust me there will be some days where you'll question if it's even worth it. And while yes I've seen success stories merely out of discipline I really believe that this journey is significantly more enjoyable and easier to bear if you give yourself a reason to stick with it. So how do you go about this? If you clicked on this video and you don't don't yet really have your why very clear, this is totally fine. I'm not saying you should only pursue this career if you're already passionate about it already. I've actually had more than one itch throughout my career, and it always just starts with curiosity. I'm not naturally very curious myself, but I realized at some point that paying attention to those random sparks of interest is often all it takes to find the things that could eventually lead into a passion of sorts. There's no getting around the fact that you'll need to spend some time with the foundations. Learning to code is very practical most of the time, but it can be exponentially more annoying if you don't learn some of the theory behind it first. No need to become a computer scientist for this, but understanding some basics will go a long way. One example to describe why this is useful is debugging. Debugging is the act of trying to figure out why your code is not working the way you intend it to. It's one of those things that can be incredibly frustrating, but also incredibly rewarding when you finally solve the problem. Trusting how each foundational layer works will give you the knowledge and confidence to more accurately determine what the problem is. Is it just an error in the logic you wrote, or is it in how you're using someone else's code, or maybe even a bug within their code? Understanding the foundational theory behind the code you write and how it interacts with the computer allows you to think critically and logically to pinpoint the root cause of the issue faster and with greater accuracy. Before fully delving into the practical side of coding, take the time to build a strong foundation of knowledge. This is one of those things that will definitely empower you to confidently troubleshoot and solve problems in your code. The biggest reason that I bring this one up is that I remember the pain of writing my first couple of lines of code and things suddenly didn't work. I was using Objective-C to learn object-oriented programming at the time, so I also admittedly wasn't making things easy for me. Despite Despite that, I think the feeling of frustration is pretty universal when the number of breakthroughs and aha moments decreases and the number of build failures and random crashes increases. Modern IDEs, that is the programs in your computer that you use to write and build code, have made great strides in mitigating this pain with clearer and more accurate descriptions of what's wrong. But I still firmly believe that there's really no replacement for a solid understanding of the basics if you want to build a career out of this. And it's actually a good moment to talk about AI. It's an amazing time for you to start leveraging these tools, but you have to be careful. It's way too tempting to just start asking ChatGPT to fix your code for you. But keep in mind that at this stage, our core priority is learning the fundamentals. So instead of just asking it to fix things, use its capabilities to explain what's going on. And I'll share with you my biggest hack for this. If you think about learning, it's really just about closing gaps. Closing the gap between your current understanding of a topic and a more accurate, robust, and truthful version of that topic. This is why teachers and mentors are a crucial element in learning. They take your specific understanding or mental image of a topic and tailor an explanation for you to close your specific gap. Textbooks and online tutorials can't really do this, and AI will never replace a human mentor. But you can try to replicate that dynamic with ChatGPT to accelerate your learning and fast track a lot of the frustration. Describe to it how you currently understand and interpret a piece of code or concept. Mention the parts that you don't understand and ask it to write an explanation that builds on the things you already know and that corrects you where you might be misinterpreting something. And it's a lot easier to verify its responses once you know what concept you should even be looking up separately. 
This is my favorite part. Start making stuff you're interested in with the new building blocks you're getting from all that learning. It's not necessarily a sequential step from the learning phase. I really believe that the sooner you overlap your theoretical learning with actually building stuff, the faster all that learning will solidify in your head. You of course need to front load some of that learning, but soon enough you'll be able to start building simple things, and I find that to be super exciting. The goal of these small projects is not to create complex or polished apps right away. It's more about gaining experience, strengthening your problem-solving skills, and solidifying all that learning from the process, as well as starting to get exposed to the more practical side of software engineering, which is incredibly important. Things like debugging, learning the features of your IDE, or maybe start delving into writing code that tests your code. I remember one thing that really helped for me was taking the time to reflect on my progress and identify areas of improvement. This incremental process helped me grow as a developer and refine my skills. Of course, all of the iPhone apps that I started building were terrible looking back, but I am a good engineer today because of them. At some point, I did build stuff worthy to be published in the App Store under my name, which was one of the most satisfying and rewarding feelings I could have gotten. Like all professionals and industries, at some point you'll need to start putting yourself out there. And it's more than just building a portfolio or establishing a social presence. The thing that is important here is for you to take a step back and start thinking about where you want your career to go. By identifying your interests and working on projects that align with it, you probably already have some area in tech that you're experienced with and have interest in. But there are other questions for you to consider. Would you like to work remotely or go to an office? Do you want to work in big tech companies or at a startup? Are you looking for accelerated career growth and rapid promotions or a good work-life balance? Maybe you have a great idea and would instead like to try and build your own business rather than work for somebody else. There are no simple answers or guide for all of these, but I do think there are some strategies you can employ to truly make the most out of this stage. The first one is to deeply immerse yourself in the industry and community. This is a great way to kickstart your software engineering career. By using social media, you can follow people that share similar interests and are already part of the industry. Consider joining in on conversations and discussions to not only make valuable connections, but also to get a feel of the environment and vibe of the industry. The tech industry encompasses a wide range of attitudes and cultures, so explore and see what resonates with you most. Another thing to keep an eye out for is internships. They offer a really valuable opportunity for you to gain practical experience, further develop your skills, and make connections within the industry. Even if you have aspirations of building your own startup, the experience and connections gained from internships can be really valuable. In addition to this, remember to keep up with your personal projects. It's crucial to showcase your abilities, to stay relevant with the industry's latest and greatest advancements, and to demonstrate your passion for the job. Not to mention to stay motivated. Building a strong portfolio is a good way to set yourself apart from other candidates and make you more appealing to potential employers. Lastly, unless you decide to go all in on an idea of yours from the very beginning, you'll need to learn to interview. And sadly, it's a very different skill set from the regular everyday programming you started learning. There's a lot more focus on underlying problem solving and algorithmic efficiency. Get in as much practice as you can and start applying for entry level positions. I remember I prepared almost every day for two months for my Microsoft interviews and practiced countless problems. This part is sadly a bit stressful, but getting real world interviews will truly hone this skill of yours. This is a big topic and a critical one to land your first job as a software engineer. So if you have time, I recommend watching this video next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.